Um, um, who distributed the keyboard? It's a data net Excuse me. Those are quality displays. These, these, these capacitors have actually been reformed. So I'll give you an example. The ESR on this oh, yeah, one, thanks. this capacitor was 2.9, if I recall correctly. I did a whole class in this yesterday. It was 2.9, which is way too high. It should be below 1. The right? ESR? The ESR. Well, after reforming, this is down to 0.39. So it's actually better than it probably was. Yeah. Oh, so you, so, also, you, so you prepared the actual capacitor? The capa yeah, everything's been right. And so these, these ceramic caps were brought up past were taken, brought up past purity points, so they were restored back to original value, and then some. Uh, the only thing that's not original here is this little board here. It's used for diagnostics, so I can plug two keyboards in. Plus, this keyboard cable is really, really, really short, and you can't actually plug the keyboard cable in without you know doing it. Now, this owner actually went out and added a power switch and an indicator and had two wires clipped to the cassette adapter so that the uh, LED would indicate here and had a separate LED. I removed those wires so you can actually take the board out. Otherwise, you can't physically take the board out. It's a pain. Is the um, x original too? Because, because they tend to drip in value yes. over here? So. Every, yes, and it is, but it has not. So, yeah, everything is good on this. So, in order to get this board up and running, I'm going to have to move some stuff around. So, don't try this at home, kids. I have to hook the power back up. I can't hook the power up because the cables are just too short. So, um, do you know which ICs have been replaced? Only one IC was replaced, the 74123, because it had it was uh, it had a memory issue, and um, that chip actually was bad. The irony was, uh, I found an identical chip, same date code, same everything, off an S100 card. Went to order a replacement off of eBay, ordered a whole slew of them to replace it. That was identical also, and all of them were bad. So the S100 card now, I'm sorry, has the wrong chip in it. So I'm gonna hook this up and grab a screwdriver, which we should have here. Now, you'll have to bear with me, it is a 40-year-old computer this year, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, we do, it is, you know, it has been checked out and it's tested as can be, but you never know. variant of the Apple One? There are no 6800 variants of the Apple One. There were only prototypes which probably went up in fire at, um, at Roz's garage. Now, there might be a prototype. I'm going to look at it in May. Um, Boz is giving us some information what to look for to see if it's one of the surviving prototypes. It might be the only one. Um, it is owned by a fairly, fairly well-to-do pharmaceutical exec who wants it uh, validated. So I'll be working with Boz on that. Now normally you come through the back to push the, uh, the cable in on this particular case. The Apple one was just the, just the board itself. But if you went to the bike shop, they would sell you a case and a keyboard. There are less than five of these cases left in intact. Uh, the other thing is, uh, very common, when people would plug these in, there's no real support, they would crack the edge connects. So you have to be careful. So what I do here is I'm actually going to go out the back here so that I don't put any pressure on the connector. And so I can use my finger to hold it in place to not damage things. So that's just, you know, me wanting to be a little uh, neurotic. So we're going to plug the keyboard in. Once again, the keyboard would normally be in there, but as you can see, it doesn't reach when it's on its side. So it literally yanks out when you go to do it. Not so much fun. So I put a keyboard multiplexer in. It makes it a lot easier to test. It also puts something in between this and most of the 6520 uh, to prevent any problems. Now, the 6520 was used only on the NTI, which was the later board, which turned out to be the rarer boards. Most of these were band sawed by Steve Jobs because the people who had the earlier bike shop on the original 50 boards, 
they tended to, with their first computer, they tended to be hobbyists and just put them away. They didn't trade them in. But the, um, the later boards, like these, people tended to trade in for an Apple II board because they had a program for that. And they basically, these boards were destroyed, most of them. So if you look on the registry, most of the boards are not MCI. There are some, but it's just not as common. So I'm actually going to come around in a minute just to see if we can plug all this in. We're going to uh, plug off an iPod just because it's easier. It is cheating. Now the interesting part of the iPods is they are not, they don't make as much volume as, you know, uh, the old cassette players. So the old cassette players would actually light up an LED to let you know your volume level, which is how you made it really reliable was you played with it until you had this LED light. Um, the problem is there's not enough volume on an iPod. An iPod is just barely enough to get this thing going. But because it's digital, you don't have to worry about the tape stretching. So sometimes you have to do a second load in an iPod. I almost always, on a fresh tape, get a perfect load on, a, on an Apple One. So let's just turn this monitor on. Like to comment, Ian, fix this monitor for me. It is beautiful when it runs. Actually, I'm going to do one quick double check. That's what I like to do. Okay, so I am going to plug this in and hopefully have a fire extinguisher handy. We're good. That would be that. And that would be good. So let's uh, come around. Now, they did not originally have a power switch. There is no backspace here. So, uh, the owner of this board, so we know it was used, uh, put a power switch on. We also know it was used because the board is warped. It is, I've actually put something underneath so it slowly warps back to flat. But because there's a place in the board where there's actually a spot that should have had a stand, it doesn't, the weight of the cassette adapter actually, uh, actually starts bowing the board down. What you can do is just, a lot of people shove a piece of wood underneath. I have, a, I have something underneath a piece, of, a piece of rubber that, and I'm slowly update, putting bigger ones so that as this board heats up, it'll flatten out and we'll leave it there. You obviously, um, you don't want to kind of bend it really fast. Um, the other thing to note is the replicas that you see out there, the boards don't flex. You'll snap them. That's one of the, there's a bunch of telltale signs they are real, but that's one of them. In fact, the boards are almost always warped a little. So I'm straightening out that area because I didn't want it to loop and short on, the, on this uh, mesh in the bottom. But uh, on the other side, I'm leaving the warp in because it's not that bad on the other side. It's just a slight, this is a telltale sign. Or the PCB solder mask can be a bit crackly. Uh, this one isn't so bad. But if you're soldering on the board, you will crack. Uh, you can't use that as a way to tell if it's real. You can actually, the Newton boards now, if you wave solder a Newton board, it bubbles. So, uh, but it doesn't bubble the same. So it's kind of, you have to be an expert to know how they bubble. So they bubble differently. Um, I'll let everyone look a little later um, at the board. You'll, on the NCI board, the other thing is you, you can never reproduce the finish on the NCI board because they are just, if you've ever seen the Apple cards, because you've probably seen them where you look at the board, it looks like a sandpaper. It's like a bubbly sandpaper, like, you know, little grits. And that's actually what the NCI boards look like. You can't reproduce that anymore. Um, Newton tried on his boards, but they just don't look right. Yesterday I was showing uh, a Newton board next to this, and you could really see the difference. I was also showing uh, a Mimeo next to it. Let's power this thing on. And hopefully we got some video signal. Hopefully my video cable works. And we might be troubleshooting. Same. Yeah, well the brightness should be up. But it also could be the monitor. I'm hoping it's not or the cable. Well, the first thing we check, this would be anticlimactic, wouldn't it? We were running it all yesterday. The first thing we check is the fact that I've got plus video back in. <laughs> 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 
because I was so concerned about getting the power and I was getting the video. Hey, listen. Even pros forget to plug it in once in a while. Try turning it off and on again. You know how many? You know how many times I've actually called, called the like, you know, I couldn't figure something out, and they're like, "Did you check this? Did you check this? Did you check this?" And then you're like, "Oh man, I'm an idiot." <laughs> Should have flash and blinking. Look, it's flashing and blinking. That are actually broken, and the machine still works. And you'll see like the real way to tell this thing works. Is that the real way to tell the machine works is to actually load a slot Now the easy part is you could load and a machine that has memory problems you can also get away with. Because it only uses the port port K bank and only matters. So if the data's screwed up, you just get your right or two going in the picture. You can't tell. So load basing is actually itself. It works with the bug, uses an entire 4K block, and it puts stuff in lower memory that has, that actually requires the system to work. We'll load up uh, basic first, and then we'll load up starter. Because that one's the next one. This particular one has 8K. Yeah, uh, it came with 4K and it's not great for it. So, um, if you know the app, how to load stuff up in Apple 2, it's very similar. But um, I think Waz realized certain characters like Waz and W were bad. So he uses R for run the monitor. He knows when he's doing G because it got confusing. So C100 is our cassette. And just like normal Apple II stuff, you have to get the memory address. And if I mess that up, I think I should have a couple of seconds. I will have this up in about 30 seconds. Yeah, now you can see it. <laughs> so one of the nice things about the two is it was in ROM. It wasn't an option. He was still the elder in this case, continually. So they chopped the bottom out to fit around there, and they changed the, um, the uh, transformers out from two transformers to a single transformer that had multiple taps, and uh, it kind of sucks. Because that was a uh, really nice intention, but it was a hobbyist. Yeah, it was a hobbyist thing. That's why, it, that's why it's just like, you know, it's like baseball cards or comic books, right? Why is a Mickey Mantle card worth so much money? Because everyone shoved them in their spokes of their bicycles and destroyed them all. Optimized for 300 baht. Now the machine is actually faster than an Apple II. If you go out and you don't do any video and you just crunch numbers with it, it's faster because it's only doing this. But once you have the output, it's slow. Now the other thing you don't see it here is carriage return, all that stuff is hardware. So if you do a carriage return, it's shoot. It's immediate. So um, when I wrote the ASCII graphics version of Lunar Lander, I took advantage of that. So it'll draw out the spots in the screen it needs to draw out, and it'll quickly adjust so it doesn't have to go through the whole screen. Now this says 30th, it's actually Apple's 40th birthday.